OK, on to ticketing. The Spurs ticketing was a bit of a nightmare. Could the club not publicise how many fans are in the first window to stop the panic when they first go on sale? Yeah, well, I'm sorry that particular supporter encountered some difficulties. Uh, as everybody knows, we, we, we had uh, 8,880 tickets uh, from Tottenham for this game. Uh, that's more or less the maximum we could apply for. We did ask for some more, um, but we were unsuccessful with that request. Um, what we decided to do was to use the allocation system that we've had in place that allocates a small proportion of ticket, tickets to supporter groups. Uh, it then goes on a loyalty point basis. Uh, we went straight in at 10 rather than sort of do it in a phased way of 30, sort of 20, 15, 10 that we might have done. Uh, and then after that, tickets went on sale to season ticket holders with any remaining tickets would then be made available to members, those who attended the previous two cup games and finally to general sale. We only got as far as season ticket holders. Um, we gave ourselves a bit of time to plan and I'm incredibly grateful to all my staff in the ticket office who worked several long hours over the weekend leading up to the sale period because one issue we identified was that people with loyalty points may not be able uh, to actually have sat with people that they would normally go to games with because the tickets would be allocated on a, on a, on a, on a strictly one per person basis. So again it was worked out that um, people who could link to other, other supporters in their network and they would then be able to buy tickets together. Um, the, uh, the work was all set up to do that and um, what we then found, um, slightly disappointingly from obviously our ticket provider, was that the, the issue that came up on the first sort of 25 minutes of the on-sale period was that um, uh, people who were on multiple devices uh, were, were, were struggling to actually connect because there were more than one person in the network potentially. Uh, we then identified another issue in terms of um, uh, pe pe people logging in at the same time and not being able to get a ticket next to them because that ticket had then been snapped up by somebody else while they were working themselves through the process. So what we did was fortunately we were able to identify that relatively quickly. Um, we were alive to what uh, people were phoning into the ticket office or on social media. Uh, we spoke to Ticketmaster and we asked them to completely reset the system, which they did. Um, and within a couple of minutes, we were back to normal. So what we were keen to do was those people who had bought tickets separately in that 25 minute period had the option later that evening to call us. And I think in the majority of cases, we got everybody back together. And uh, uh, again, um, that, that, was, that was off the initiative of the ticket office who were keen to offer the best possible service to supporters to enable that to happen. After all, they'd worked on it for several days to enable that and facilitate that to happen. Um, when we went on sale two days later, so we had basically 5,000 supporters who had 10 loyalty points or more. Many were season ticket holders. Um, we didn't know how many of those would actually take up their option. And in the end, it was just over 3,000. So uh, there's probably a couple of thousand people who didn't do it. So I think we're a little bit conscious of putting numbers out. We may absolutely terrify other season ticket holders in terms of the allocation because we felt there would be more than the 5,000. Mm. As it happened, um, we then went on sale on the Wednesday and within 45 minutes, season ticket holders had snapped up their tickets. Again, I think there were issues, but the, the rate at which tickets went, that the people in their baskets were um, building their own ticket and then think, I'll take the ticket next to me, but somebody else in the same area, as you find with concerts and other major events where things go on sale and sell really quickly, that other one gets taken up. So I think where we, where we have been able to, we've been able to sort quite a few people out now who can sit together. Um, what I feel most disappointed for is those supporters, those season ticket holders who are unlucky. Mm. If we get tickets back over the next few weeks, and we have had one or two trickle in, then uh, we will try and put some tickets back on sale, but it will be exclusively for season ticket holders who have been unlucky so far in reserving a ticket. But isn't it amazing that we've got an FA Cup, the FA Cup gets degraded now in so many different ways, but we have a demand for 9,000 and, and probably double that who wanted to go and watch the third round of the FA Cup at Tottenham Hotspur. I grew up on the FA Cup, I'm sure you did too, as a very, very special competition. Of course, Portsmouth has some, you know, some, you know, some recent history in the Cup and it's a special competition, I know, to Portsmouth Football Club as well. So to actually um, have that level of interest to go to a Premier League club and have that backing is going to be something really, really special. 
um, and I'm sure it's going to put, you know, everybody's going to be there. It's going to put so many smiles on faces, and I know the players will 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 enjoy the occasion and be determined to put on a good show for everybody. So all said and done, is it a bit harsh to describe it as a nightmare? Well, that's up for other people to describe it as as to their issues and their problems. We could have we could have put we, we could have made it easier. Uh, we could have had people queuing up for tickets, and I think in the perishing conditions that we had last week that people experienced. I think doing it online and selling tickets quickly was probably the right thing to do. So every time you do something, you can always learn from the experience that you've had. Um, so you know, we take on board all the comments, but overall, um, I would hope that the way we did it and the way that we were able to resolve a lot of the problems for people uh, were, 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 were satisfactorily resolved. And I'm very grateful to those supporters who actually took the time to contact the ticket office and thank them for sorting any particular issues they have. And we want to got it right for everybody. We will have disappointed, um, but every experience you build and learn. But I think, you know, somebody could have come down to the ticket office and if we'd have had queues and 9,000 people queuing in a queue, that would have probably taken the best part of 18 hours uh, and wouldn't have been great for everybody. So hopefully the, the online solution was one that um, was the most pragmatic one to do in the circumstances. So on the same subject, is there any chance the club will consider a new ticketing partner in the future? Well, you're always looking to improve. Um, we have a contract uh, with our existing provider. Um, we um, have, you know, I, I want to re-look at all the different service level agreements we have with all our partners, uh, not just Ticketmaster, but you know, Just Sport as well, Piglet's Pantry, a new partner coming in, and make sure that uh, in the same way as all my staff are targeted and committed to providing the best possible service to supporters, that our partners also share that philosophy. And we'll do that for service level agreements. Contracts at some point in, 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 with all our different partners come to an end. That gives you an opportunity to go out and look at the marketplace and go for that which you know, delivers the best value. And I don't mean just necessarily the best financial value, but the best value in terms of service and provision for supporters. And that's something I'm committed to delivering for Portsmouth Football Club. Pompey are a championship size club, which should have a bigger ticket office with phones regularly answered. Are there any plans to upgrade? Well, if you look at a lot of businesses now, um, most businesses are now moving more to an online um, uh, ordering service. Uh, a, lot, a lot of functions now where you can get through, through for telephones are manned by robots. Uh, and for me, what we need to do is really get our online ticketing service to such a state that everybody has proper confidence in it. So let's look at some of the things that could happen in the future. At the moment, my ticket office staff spend an inordinate amount of time dealing with away tickets, for which we gain very little revenue. On every away ticket, we get 5% of the sales value of what we sell, yet we probably spend 65% of our time in a week dealing and fulfilling away ticket requests, which is nonsense. So um, I think one of the things that we saw uh, at the Wickham game was the ability, uh, because Wickham share the same ticket provider as us, we were able to do digital tickets. So no ticket processing, very, very simple process. Um, my understanding and uh, you know, all the feedback I have is it worked very well at the turnstiles for supporters as well. So that's something we need to look you know, you know, much greater at. How do we pr improve our online ticketing? Um, because um, you know, every member of staff answering a telephone that I have to bring in costs a lot of money to, I into the football club. I want to offer great service. Uh, but we need to make sure that uh, you know we, we, we you know we're not having we can reduce those number of calls of people coming in. The way you reduce it is by having good service. So, what's the nature of those calls? What are we dealing with? And how can we you know look, look at alternatives? We'll always have a telephone service. We'll always have people at the counter. Um, but I think you know the modern world, as we've seen with you know a cashless society, a cashless stadium, uh, is moving more online in many many different ways. So we know that that's the way we need to move. Over to retail. I attempted to buy some Nike training wear from the club. 95% of stuff is out of stock at Christmas. Why? And there were similar ones. Why no goalies kit in stock? So expensive online, but nothing in stock. Yeah, I think, um, uh, first of all, I think in defence of Nike, um, they've, uh, like, and, and, and indeed this has been seen across so many football clubs this year, that there has been problems in terms of the Far East uh, having their own issues in terms of lockdown. They've had extended lockdowns, so factories and distribution has been a lot slower than it would normally have been. 
I get incredibly frustrated as supporters do that, you know, we, we, we run out of particular items and stock and we can't reorder, we can't top up. Um, that's the nature of the deal we have. It probably is a consequence of having, you know, one of the top brands in the world deal with you because obviously they're very, very big and that's the way they deal with, 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 with clubs like ourselves. Um, so again, we're constantly on it, we're constantly putting pressure on as to how it works. On the flip side, we've had a, you know, we've had the best year uh, in retail this year than we've had since the first year we went with Nike, which was an exceptional year. So our retail uh, merchandising sales are you know well well up on last year and the year before, um, and that's a consequence of more stock going out. So uh, we haven't been necessarily been able to to, to 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 build up. What I'm keen to do is make sure that we look to improve the range as much as possible. Uh, and take supporters' feedback in terms of some of the items they would like to see, uh, some of the things they'd like to buy. Uh, we've got a match day experience group now as well that can support us in that and then go back to Nike and ask them to, for their support in delivering these things. I have to say, the deal that was done by um, you know people before me, my predecessors in this football club on merchandising, is an extremely lucrative one for this football club. It's a brilliant deal and is you know generating an incredible amount of revenue uh, and I, I, I you know and there's the upside to that uh, we can see this year in terms of you know having a really really good year but you can always improve you can always make it better so the fact um, first of all apologies for people who've had frustrations with particular items um, and for those that have got ideas in terms of things that they would like to see and would like to buy then let us have those and we will you know we, we will make sure to see whether that economically uh, we can make those work. Academy, are there any plans for the academy to move up to category two? Well, first of all, let me let me just reflect on the academy this year and um, thank Greg Miller uh, and his team for you know the fantastic progress they've made in such a, such a short space of time. We've got a you know a different culture within the academy at the moment. We've got some really really strong fat values, strong alignment with the first team which is, you know, all goes well for the future uh, at Portsmouth Football Club. Uh, almost like throughout, got new staff nearly in every single position, medicine, sports science, analysis. Uh, we've really strengthened our recruitment team as well. We now have 10 scouts out and about looking, see if we can increase that even further to give us the broader reach of looking at people, uh, looking at young talent. Uh, we're working very hard with junior football clubs in the area to rebuild the relationships that I think had withered away over the last few years giving them the confidence to uh, send uh, their best boys uh, or recommend their best boys to Portsmouth for us to look at. Um, and that was, that's all come through for, for, for a huge amount of work. Where we're frustrated at the moment probably is uh, in terms of facilities. We currently work out of seven sites. If we're to progress as an academy, um, then the rules are such that to get to Cat, Cat 2 or Cat 1, you need to operate off all your facilities, off, off academy facilities off one site. They can be separate to the first team and many clubs operate in that way, uh, but you can't have a disparate number of sites that we currently have. So I'm very, very keen to look at any opportunity that presents itself in Portsmouth or the surrounding area where I can go back, have a look at it. Does it represent fair value in terms of price? Uh, does it also enable us to do the things that we would need to do because you know we 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 need to move to look at things like 3G pictures and domes um, and as I said operate them you know typically off, off off one or two sites. We'd like to explore whether we could expand our site, at the, our current training ground, uh, you know, in Hilsey, but um, again, you know, that uh, that's not within our our gift at the moment, but. Again, we continue to monitor every opportunity that we can do to do that, and that would enable us to do it. But I think the Academy is in a strong place at the moment. Um, we've just come off a 5-0 victory last night, you know, boys against men in the Hampshire Senior Cup at, at Andover, um, doing very, very well in the league. But of course, we need to look a little bit further down. We need to look, you know, at those 8s, 12s, 13s, 14s coming through, because um, some, sometimes you, you, you can't get instant success in the Academy. The culture and the values and everything else that we're putting into place now are going to yield dividends in the years to come. And I'm incredibly excited and grateful for the work that Greg and his team are doing. Latest of the Pompey Health and Fitness Centre refurbishment at the training ground. Yeah, that's been a, a real bright spot this year. Um, of course, when we went in there, we had a very aging building, uh, had no you know, TLC for many years. 
it's safe to say that uh, we, we, we took a video uh, demonstrating the, to the owners all the things that uh, were, 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 were fragile with it. You know, we had uh, floating swimming pool walls. We had uh, a spa which was um, about to fall down. Everybody knows about the play football, which was in a, uh, in a state which wasn't fit for purpose. Uh, and uh, it was a little bit of a horror show, to be honest, when we took that building on. But we have over the year invested in it because we s investment at the end of the day is going to generate um, you know, some extra additional income, which we can then reinvest in the training ground itself and some of the facilities that we need to do. So the swing pool is now complete and been refurbished. Uh, the spa has moved from upstairs about you know, 50 metres away from the swimming pool to be adjacent to the swimming pool, where of course it should be. Changing rooms um, have all been completed now, so new male and female changing rooms adjacent on the ground floor, so we don't have this ridiculous situation of our female members there having to carry children up and down stairs to, to go to the swimming pool. Uh, the gym floor itself, um, all new equipment has gone on, incredibly exciting in terms of seeing everything and how that floor is being used. Um, and what we've also done as well is uh, created um, some spaces now so when the time is right we can move the first team in the academy into that building as well with their own separate gym, their own separate analysis suites, lecture theatre, office space for all the first team staff, then take the porter cabins down and that creates more pitch space for us to use as well. So um, over the next few weeks uh, we'll be really delivering a strong marketing campaign uh, working together with uh, Mosaic who operate um, the Pompey Health and Fitness Centre for us uh, and there will be some incentives for season ticket holders who, who would like to come on board and train uh, alongside the first team in the academy in a really really good environment so incredibly exciting and again I'm grateful for to the owners for backing us with that investment to give us a chance to you know create something which I think again will be a really strong um, opportunity and, and, and deliver revenue for the football club in the future. So, one more inside the stadium. Is there anything that can be done to improve the mobile data signal at Fratton Park? Um, yes, there is, uh, but again, it comes at a considerable cost. Um, the Wi-Fi at any venue is obviously limited by how much bandwidth um, that you can provide. And of course, in a stadium of eighteen to 19,000 people, people on the phones, everybody wants to use a, a Wi-Fi signal. Uh, I, I recall when I was on the board of the Football League, we had a project back in 2016, which the league were looking at with a vendor to uh, pull in the uh, to, put, to pull in a system where clubs could then uh, ha have a Wi-Fi signal in return for assigning all their rights over to the vendor for things like betting and uh, advertising and other areas. And ultimately, um, they couldn't make that cost effective to run across the 72 clubs. Um, technology moves on though, um, and there is the ability now to uh, look potentially at uh, putting a mast in, renting some space, and again assigning some rights over to uh, the operator on a match day. Uh, or we can look at um, another alternative method as well, which um, you know, which, which, which Wembley have been putting in with with EE. Uh, the cost of that is probably we reckon, estimate at the moment to be close to four hundred to five hundred thousand pounds. So, how do we actually make that pay for us? Is is a, is a project that we'll continue to look at. Okay, let's go out on a high. A lot's gone on over the last year. What were your own personal key highlights? Well, I think you look back at a year and you say, have we progressed in any way? And I think there's been you know, a huge amount of progress uh, at the football club. Um, I think looking back at it, the, uh, you want to try and go into every transfer window a little bit stronger than when you went into it. I certainly felt that was the case and still believe that was the case with our summer window. I think we did some terrific recruitment uh, through you know, hard work from Danny, Nicky, the recruitment team. Uh, leaving us in a really, really strong place. That created the conditions for a strong start to the season. Uh, as, we've alluded, as we said earlier on, the recent results are not what they should have been. I think there's been some mitigation in terms of injuries in that respect, but we still feel really confident and have belief in the way the second half of the season can look for us. Um, the appointment of Richard Hughes as, as, is a really important one long-term for the football club, something we were you know, relatively patient for. Um, I think um, you know, there were obviously some difficulties with the recruitment process in, all the, in April and May, which I'll acknowledge, and I had to pause the process. I think it's been well recorded that I felt there was too much noise going on outside, 
and uh, you know it was making it very very difficult for candidates who were in the process or applying for the process so we just put a break on things and were patient and eventually we got our man in Rich who's made a fantastic start to life. Um, I mentioned the Academy, um, I think again we've made some really shrewd appointments in there through Greg's uh, team uh, both in the coaching and in, in, in the medical side, sports science side, um, you know, teaching side, education. I think we're in a really, really strong place with the academy for many years to come. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed by the passion, the energy and the enthusiasm that I see day to day within those staff and how hard they're working. Um, the stadium uh, speaks for itself in terms of doing the North and North Lower and the South Stand. Had some massive challenges in terms of relocating 2,000 season ticket holders back in January and February. Uh, pleased with the way that happened and again the way that the South Stand uh, relocations happened as well because people found themselves moved slightly to the left or the right. Grateful to the ticket office staff for what they did but I must say a special thank you to all the supporters who worked on the working groups of the North Stand and those supporters on the South Stand working groups who helped us go through all the riddles and problems that we kept coming up with in terms of how do we do this, their advice, their guidance was incredibly important to what I think was a successful outcome. Within the stands itself, I think we've progressed the concessions. Uh, we've got a fan zone. Um, again, Piglets have been absolutely brilliant. They've worked with us on the design of those stands. Uh, the bars, uh, we've been incredibly unfortunate to have a top contractor uh, in terms of PMC, Steve Cripps, uh, who've delivered everything on budget, delivered everything on time and piglets themselves have seen um, some of the things we've done in those bars and people say well, why spending time investing in it well let me give you one example johnny we, we, we we're in a situation where our revenue is nearly 70 percent up we've increased our spend per head by 70 percent of people coming into the stadium so yeah the revenue would naturally have gone up because more people are coming into the stadium but the amount that each supporter is spending has also gone up as well and um, I, can't give, I won't give you the exact numbers, but let me say that equates to the sale of 500 season tickets. So you can see why we focus on those things. So we're not just simply reliant on ticketing income. All these ancillary activities, such as the health clubs, such as what we're doing with Piglets, with our merchandise as well, all make a significant difference and they're worth spending time on. So that's been a, a, a real key highlight uh, for me as well in terms of the way that's, that, that, that's, 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 that's delivered. Pompey Health and Fitness Centre is in a different place. Again, we can go into a really exciting 2023 for them with new facilities. That will have an impact on how quickly we can move things on at the training ground as to how successful that is. But again, we're well positioned. Um, and I think from supporters, um, I think uh, we, we changed some of our, a little bit of our supporter engagement. We've got a match day experience working group now established and set up. Again, they've been absolutely brilliant in some of the ideas. They can take full credit for the development of the fan zone uh, and how that works and giving us feedback so we can continually improve it. Um, we've obviously, the two working groups have been great as well because I was a bit conscious that a bit of the um, work that we were doing was a bit one way. So it was, you know, I was good. we were doing a lot of supporter forums. You and I were going out to forums with Danny uh, last season, uh, we've got the H&A board, we've got the Tony Goodall Fans Conference, um, so all those are, are great vehicles, but for me there tends to be a little bit one way of directing questions um, at the executive, at me, whereas I would, uh, you know, that's great, but I'd also like to see how can we embellish it further, so to actually have some sessions where we can have creative discussions and solve one or two issues has been brilliant in terms, in terms of that going forward, so I think we've moved a little bit in that way, still loads to do, uh, but you know that's uh, that, that's great for the future of the football club. I'm a great believer, as you know, in involving supporters in decisions that affect the most, particularly in terms of match day. And uh, that's something that uh, I, I've always held a strong belief and commitment to, and something we'll continue to do here at Portsmouth Football Club. So that's been been great. But ultimately, um, all those things are great. And I think um, you know we can talk all the time about the academy. We can talk about training grounds. We can talk about pitches. Uh, but you know, we, we, and the stadium developments, but it comes back to one thing, and that's I know what all supporters want to see is a successful football club on the pitch, developing and moving through the divisions, and that has to be the ultimate goal. That's what we're here for. That's our vision to develop, you know, create a football club, a sustainable football club, an inclusive football club that can play football at the highest level. That's what all these things do in tandem, coming together collectively to get there, and that's what we. But that's that's the ultimate goal. 
And we won't be successful until we achieve that. And that's what we continue to strive for every single day. I've got a great team of people. And that's the final thing I want to say today in terms of the progress of the year. The team we've got here, the new people we brought into the football club, the existing staff that have been here for many years are 100% committed to do it. We spent a lot of time looking at our values, looking at our purpose as a football club vision, and each department now has, has its objectives. And within it, whether you work in maintenance, whether you work in security, whether you work in the academy, the first thing you know, I've asked them all to look at is how do you make your role um, dependent on delivering the conditions for success for the football club? So what can you do in what you do to, to deliver success for the conditions? What can you do to deliver great service for the football club? What can you do to establish this football club at the heart of its community? And what can you also do to make sure we are financial sustainable and never get into the issues or the problems that we had before? With that, all remains to be said is happy Christmas. Thank you, Johnny. And can I wish every single supporter um, you know, an amazing Christmas uh, and a very, very successful uh, new year. And uh, let's, you know, let, let's kick it off in a really good start you know, with, with Boxing Day and looking beyond into the fixtures uh, in January. And for those that are going to top them as well, um, thank you for your support. Thank you for support throughout the whole year. Uh, and we look forward to working together and trying to achieve some great things for you.